Hey traders, this is T Bradley 90 from the My Investing Club chat. I'm one of the top mentors and moderators in chat. As a special gift to our viewers on YouTube, we have created a free two hour course to help teach you how to start a consistently profitable trading business and identify high paying setups in just 30 days. There will be limited seating every week, so register for the course and reserve your spot now using the link in the description. As a special bonus for everyone that watches the entire video, we will give you the link to a free 10 hour additional mini course that has never been released to the public. Register now before all slots completely fill up. All right. So today we're going to be talking about the first resistance, right? So the first resistance short, hey, what's up, Nick? The first resistance short is the first setup I ever learned, right? It was the first setup that I ever was like, oh, that's why, right? Like, and like, and so I, I remember I, like I, I gathered uh, actually on, on my on my laptop, which I no longer have, like I was really annoyed. My my first laptop I ever got, I was in college and that laptop broke and it had all of my saved charts. So that's really annoying. I had I didn't have all of my old ones. But yeah, it's 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 the setup that I gathered all of my charts on. It was the very first setup I ever learned. And we're gonna and I'm excited to kind of talk I was we were gonna talk about it last week, but um then S I N T stuff happened and I'm like, okay, we have to talk about this stuff. What's up, Sam? Um, all right, so first resistance, we'll get to it. So today we're going to talk about the key traders of the week. Um, for those of you, this is your first webinar. Uh, I, I always go over the key traders of the week in this webinar. I like to talk about the market sentiment that kind of gives me, um, not a, a direction of my trades, like, but it helps prepare me to maybe be more cautious on the long side or more aggressive on the short side or either or coming into the next week. So I like to talk about market sentiment. I, I throw in some large cap stuff too. Um, we're gonna talk about different, there's a different trader topic or two that I talk about every single week, depending on what's hot and what's not in the chat room. Um, and then uh, weekly I change like the fun segment. Sometimes I talk about strategies, which we're gonna talk about tonight, the first resistance short. And other times we talk about psychology and those are actually my favorite ones. Um, other times we get into like executions and, and good stuff with today's the first resistance and then we're going to end the we're going to end the webinar with a q a um and tom diesel our um our, our newest moderator is going to uh be our guest speaker so okay works first so um yeah i actually kind of had a slow week in small cap land like we had some some business but like i was i, I mainly did a lot of large cap trades um this week mostly scalps but um anyway so this is a this is a very easy trade for me. This was I I, I did this trade when I was kind of doing other stuff. Like I, I wasn't even really monitoring this trade. Like this was one of the like it's always fun when you can trade kind of robotically. Like I was in and out of my seat when I was doing this. Um, just like I was, you know, I would I was going. I had some other stuff to do, so I could like, you know, go make breakfast, put this on. Right, I, it could be very robotic about this kind of trade. And this is because it's a trend trade. I know exactly where my stop, I had a hard stop in this trade. I know exactly where I should put my stop. I know exactly where I should put my ads and I know exactly where I should get my covers depending on what ads I get, right? Uh, so anyway, so this is next with Roku. Um, that was, this was today and this was kind of a, this was a ho-hum trade, but um, this, I wanted to, I, I, I put this here because it's a good comparison to the work trade that I just did, right? So here, I, I'm basically trying to trade this as a trend as it is, right? But look at what I did, right? There is no lower low here, right? I, I this is now this is definitely an anticipation trade, right? See the difference between see the difference between this one. I get my lower low and I'm into the pops compared to this one where I'm trying to guess the top. This is an example of me anticipating the setup, right? I'm I didn't get a confirmation of the setup. These, these are more feelers that I was trying to turn into a trade, right? And normally these don't work out for me, but I've learned about these trades to just don't marry them right so you know i didn't marry it and because this was roku and it's a heavily shorted name the ssr was on it had a big red day yesterday and this is into the balance i'm keeping well aware of the fact that this can recover right and that this could very well where i covered some down here i only covered a quarter down here so this was basically like a break-even trade all right and so um, yuma uh oh why did i call this yuma that was a mistake i i I, that's why I can't remember SVI. This is supposed to be SVI. 
uh, this is my, I don't know, oh, because I want to go over Yuma, actually. Yeah, here's the SPI tree, but I don't remember putting it in here because I know I named it Yuma, which is really dumb. This should say SPI. I don't know why I have Yuma on here. Um, anyway, so what I was going for on SPI was the washout long. Like This was a very, like, washout long into support down here. This is kind of very classic setup for me, right? Um, I'm, I'm going for the washout long. I'm starting in, like, hoping to and like I have cells in the high 60s high 60s and 70s right this is these are where my cells are currently at the time um, and then we keep going down and I'm, I'm getting close to I'm getting close to stopping out of this trade um, because the, the washout long kind of isn't happening but I'm trying to give it a little bit of I'm trying to give it a little bit of slippage a little bit of extra room to maybe like it I tried to hold here and it goes to tank and everyone chases down here and I get some solid ads on the trade. I think I have like a 36 average or something like this. Like, I'm like, I'm right in it. I'm like right in here. And, uh, and all right, so those are the trades. Yeah, so I know why I have Yuma up there. You guys have to remind me, um, Yuma is important to the first resistance stock that we're gonna have. Um, and I'm gonna have to find it. All right, so yeah, so we actually had a lot of movers. Like I had to actually make this kind of smaller than normal. Um, but um, it's almost 50-50 again, you know, like, uh, last week was 50-52 with the greens and the reds, and normally it's mostly red in small cap land, but this time we're, we're seeing some, some movers, and for those who are, this is their first time of the market sentiment, um, this is where I assess all of the, uh, the main movers of the week, and the, the red and green does not necessarily mean that the stock held green or the stock went red. I, I give it a red or green based on what I feel like the, if the expectation of the move was uh, superseded, which is green, or, or um, you know, underperformed, which is red. And some of these red ones just like popped up and died, which is why like a, a lot of these failed pumps like Drad just kind of like popped up and totally died, right? Like Taper popped up and totally died. MPSL popped up and totally died. And that like you expect some kind of play, some kind of momentum, some kind of like volume to the stocks before they die. And that's kind of normal. It would get a black right there. But these just kind of just felt lackluster. These stocks all held the gains stronger than like I feel um, most of the market was anticipating. Synth is still hanging in there, right? Right now, I think we're dead in the middle, right? I think, I think we're dead in the middle um, of the market, right? Like we've been over here. I still think if, if I had to put us in this chain, I'd put us right here. We're kind of fast to buy now, ask questions later. There's none of that super hype that comes from the dead market. But it's a steady market, so uh, I don't think we're in the tankers market. We're kind of right in the middle. So that's where I feel we're at. Um, and so um, I, I didn't change that. Uh, so anyway, so a healthy borrow, right? A healthy borrow, you, you, uh, you guys are going to um, hear me talk about, you guys are going to hear me talk, hear me talk about this um, in the chat from time to time. And you probably heard me talk about a healthy borrow. But um, before I get into it, uh, let me talk about like the, the, the basic of the borrow game for all the new traders out there, right? Uh, the borrow game is basically um, when you're fighting to be the only one to have the borrow, right? In a perfect scenario, you are the only person in the world that has the short and everybody else in the song, in the song, the only one else in the stock um has to be long because you're the only one in the world who can short so that means if a stock spikes up that means it's it's not spiking up on any covers it's only spiking up because people are buying it at high prices and if people are buying it at high prices when the stock turns around everybody turns into sellers right so if you're the only person short the only um, trades that are going to be hap that are going to happen once the top is put in, once the buyers stop buying, the only trades that are going to be taking place are going to be sells. And what happens if you're the only person covering? Well, you basically get to control the price, right? Your cover is going to be where they get to sell, right? So if it's you versus if it's only you and one other person, they they're buying and you're sell. If if you're buying you know, you're covering into their cell. What's the, the what's the sharp ratio for your trading strategy? I want to know the historical uh, variance of your, no, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> I knew it, I knew it. <laughs> what's your favorite setup? What's your, I, I want to know what's your bread and butter? What's, um, what's your favorite? Yeah, one? my favorite setup is uh, Deathline. 
and low hanger. I, you know, I, I, I like those because I can, you know, use size on, 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 like on those, especially on, on low hanger. It's like, uh, you know, when, when stuff is dead on the day one and, and then got to day two, right? You know, you could short at like the pops all you like, you know, with all the size you want. But with, you know, the, the problem lately is, you know, you, it's, it's, the, the locate is, is quite expensive lately, you know, with the low hanger. So yeah, kind of skip it and, and, and switch it to a deadline strategy more. So sure. So, um, yeah. So if you, as a, one thing that frustrates the crap out of me on low hangers is never getting a full fill ever. Exactly. Yeah. Right. How do you, how do you deal with that? Right. Cause I know a lot of people want to trade the fantasy order way cause it's, like how do you deal with it? Yeah, uh, lately I was like uh, waiting for it to pop, and then I I locate. So if if the the stock couldn't pop to the certain point for me, so I'm I'm just gonna you know pass it you know to to the next one. So uh, I'm I'm just waiting for the stock to pop to my line, and then I you know get some shares. So because, uh, you know, that's for sure I'm, I'm, I'm going to use that. So it's got not, not going to go no waste, you know, my locates on that one like that. Yeah. And th that honestly, that's what I do too. Like, I, I think I yeah. know on it. I always locate small. I locate like, yeah. I locate what I call just in case shares. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Just in case the borrow goes away, I have something. And, yeah, and but the, the yeah the problem is, is like I'm 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 using TZ right trade zero and you know usually they cost like four cents you know five cents sometimes even ten cents you know it just doesn't make sense to to get something and then not using it at all so right yeah cost of doing business is yeah yeah and I want to make sure I didn't miss any questions here yeah. Oh, I'm into, I'm into last, um, okay, let me just make sure and then we'll catch up. Yeah, Joe. Uh, I don't think so. Um, oh, bottom fishing says, um, Trading this doesn't scare you with the limit up. That doesn't change your mindset on the pattern. That was a good question that I didn't address. Um, uh, I, I'm certainly afraid of limit ups, but I guess what I'm more confident in is that the resistance is going to hold um, before, like before it gets to the limit up. You know what I'm saying? Like, and and you can be afraid that like the limit up is going to happen before the first resistance line hits. But that's exactly what happened today, and Alex and Val both nailed it, right? Just because it limit ups before the resistance, that doesn't mean people aren't still looking to attack it right there. Um, I think I'm gonna do that one. All right. Um, is there a difference between scalping and nail and bail? Uh, you wanna take that, Tom? Yeah, I mean, it's it's pretty much the same, you know, for me, scalping or nail and bell. You just, you know, aim for the, the quick move. It's like, like front side shorting and front side covers. I think it's, it's pretty much, you know, what I did, you know, when, when I'm shorting front side. And so I'm, I'm just aiming for the, the quick scalp, you know, and be done with it because I don't want to, the, 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 the stocks, you know, going against me on that so yeah i think it's it's pretty much you know the same for me and yeah, bell or scalping yeah see i um i think it all depends on like what your average time frame like like a swing trader calls every one of us in this room scalpers right yeah <laughs> like yeah. if like if you know like if we're trading intraday that means we're scalpers or some swing traders for me scalping means i'm so i have like i actually have a I actually have a distinction for me. So a distinction I use for um, scalping versus 
nail and bail is my scalps are always range hold strategies, meaning I'm literally like, I'm not waiting for the support to break. I'm covering before it breaks, right? I'm looking for the smaller profit because I don't know if it's going to break, but I'm taking it before. My nail and bail is I want it to break. And the second it breaks, I'm probably trying to cover after the break. So that's my distinction. Okay. Hey, traders, this is Tosh. I go by tbradley90 in the My Investing Club chat. Just wanted to reach out and say if you have any questions about MIC, joining MIC, maybe you're a member already, you have three ways to contact myself personally and through MIC. You can hit our social media, you can hit me through PMs in chat, or you can contact us through my email at tosh at myinvestingclub.com. That's T-O-S-H at myinvestingclub.com. I will get back to you in a timely manner, and I'm saying this because I'm here to help, and I don't want anybody to be afraid to reach out and ask any question that they have. We are here for you guys. All right, see you guys.